So home theater 2.0 begins. Let's take a look at my first day of preparations. All right, so I spent the better part of the afternoon today starting the home theater 2.0 upgrade, basically getting the room ready. In a couple days, the new speakers are gonna be going in, so I'm basically pulling stuff out and getting ready. Let's take a look around really quick. There's the Emotiva XPA11 sitting in the box, pulled out of my rack, up for sale. A couple of big boxes for my Focal Towers. We'll talk about those in a second. And there's the new Focal 1000 series in-wall set. Still all in the boxes. I'll be opening those up, getting them all ready to go. We got four 1000 IW6s, four 1000 ICW6s, and three IW LCRs. Awesome. Starting to package up some of the older stuff. So here we have three of the 906s in the boxes, the Focal Aria 906s, ready to list in that Electra 1030 or 1008 center. Got my stands pulled out. Let's go into the room and take a look. So deconstruction basically means, wow, you can, you can tell the treated room probably from the untreated basement area from the audio as soon as I walked in. So I pulled my heights down took the brackets and that down. So we've got sitting on the floor right there. As I've said, the center's gone. That's boxed up and ready to list. I did pull down the monster, the GIK monster base traps from the back wall. And I ordered two of the feet because there'll be in wall speakers, the IW sixes going into the same spot where those base traps used to hang. And I'll be putting the monsters uh, basically next to each other, maybe a little bit separated in the middle in front of the curtain there. So GIK makes these metal feet. I bought two pairs of them, one for each of the base traps. We can take a look. They basically just wood screw in there. Pretty nice, good height. Comes up to about my chin. So definitely higher than the, higher than the couch, higher than the seating. So that'll work out great. I took the rear heights down as well. You can see some of my destruction in the wall there. That's going to be a pain to fix up uh, because there's some of those hammer in inserts that you thread a screw into. Those don't really come out. So I did go ahead just a little bit ago and I ordered a couple more GIK panels. Specifically, they're, they're two foot by two foot, two inch thick foam absorption plus diffusion. So one for each side. That'll be the easiest way to just stick them on the wall there and cover up that uh, cover up that damage without needing to worry about mudding it and sanding it and so on. But this wall is looking pretty rough. There's a couple of marks there. You can see some of my paint touch up work. Now, when the lights are off, I got a lot more light in here right now. When the lights are off, you really don't see it, but it's it's bugging me. So I think I might go ahead and just repaint this back wall, um, not do a lot of dry drywall repair and sanding and mudding and all that stuff, but at least just give it a nice uniform, fresh coat of paint because a little more of the wall will be, be visible. That little blemish there will probably be visible. The IW6 will be mounted just a little bit up and to the right of that. So a little while back as well, I took the GIK tags off of all the panels. I think it looks a lot nicer that way. Everything is a more kind of like uniform, uniform black. For my other videos, you know, the projector's been, been moved back. That's ready to go. So pretty exciting. So we're going to have an I1 uh, IW6 kind of sandwiched in between those panels there. I may have to shift these a little bit left, a little bit right. We'll see how that goes. I'll probably force the corner traps a little more into the corner. We'll have an IW6 there, an IW6 there, and then another one, of course, on this side. That'll be the four surrounds up on the ceiling where the Atmos speakers really belong. We'll have the four ICW6s going in up there. And I do have some GIK grid fusers on order. It's gonna be a little while before those come, unfortunately, at least some weeks, according to the email. I got a nice black carpet, eight by 11 foot, that's gonna go right in here. So all of that light reflecting down from the screen is gonna get sucked up 
by that carpet and it'll give this front floor area a little more of a maybe not a stagey presence but at least a kind of a separated presence the screen is coming down next to make room for the new acoustically transparent I'll be working on that shortly i still have the focal towers in here those are the electra 1038 be's i actually was talking to my wife about not selling these my original intent of course was just to sell them i may go ahead and list them anyway see what i can get for them however i think these would be killer in our living room and uh, i like them so much i'm having a hard time with the idea of parting parting ways uh, i love their towers i think they look awesome these are so slick the sopras and the canchas look even better but I think, I'll, as I've said in some of the other videos, I'm really, this room is going to be the home theater. It's going to be multi-channel audio. It's going to be more cinematic and focused after these changes. And if we do some vinyl, we do some other music type stuff, I think I want to take that to the living room. So if the two channels up in the living room, that's the perfect place to take these. I got such a great deal on them three and a half years ago when I bought them. It'd be a shame to shame to sell them but we'll see I, I could really probably use the money to buffer against everything that i'm spending for these upgrades and so on i think we're going to trial it i'm going to deinstall them with some help because i think they're a good 100 pounds or so a piece i'll move them up into our living room and just set them there in front of our tv kind of flanking the tv and the bump out that's uh that's our setup there and just see how they fit if they get in the way if they feel obtrusive or whatever. My long-term plan up there would be to get it to Focal in-walls if I stick with the in-walls, ideally Utopias. Um, we'll see about that. But if I can just keep these and they work in the room, that would be fantastic. So we'll see how that works. I figure we'll move them up. The Christmas tree will be coming out, of course, uh, in the next few days. We'll put these speakers up there. Don't tear anything up trying to wire them. Just let them be and see how they, see how they look in the space. And we'll go from there. So we got one more pair of the 906s. I was actually thinking, since these are still current model, I boxed up all the other ones, and maybe I don't want to. I don't want to re-unbox it, but maybe I'll do a reboxing video. I think the 906s maybe deserve some extra attention before I end up selling them. Again, because they are current model, great, great speakers. I could always hook them up in here for a little two-channel, do a little measurement, do a little, uh, do a little type of review video on those a lot of people per like the facebook focal group and such seem to really be buying arias quite frequently so it's a popular speaker and rightfully so i just i just love the focal speakers so let's let's take an extra second just to admire the flax driver oh so nice i really like the look of that flax driver so if there was actually a speaker in the Focal line that appeals to me the most, I'd have to say it's the Kanta, the perfect combination of the Flax driver and the Beryllium tweeters. But it's not their best, it's not their best driver that belongs to the W cone, so so be it. I wish it was, just because it looks so darn cool. Let's go ahead into the storage room and take a look at the rack. And anybody looking for some awesome BTI speaker stands, those will be selling. So I have started to rejigger things in here. I do have the computer running. I didn't shut it off for this video, so a little bit of background noise. And there's the pair of sounds. A31 and dual A52 pluses. Pretty sweet. So the A31 will be driving the LCRs in the theater. I've got one A52 Plus will be driving the left surround, left side surround, left rear surround, and the two left Atmos overheads, and then one will be the right. I think splitting the left and the right is a good balance uh, between what amp is driving what speakers, which means there's two amplifier, two amplifiers uh, left open not being used by the theater because it's 13 channels of amplification and I'm only using 11 for the theater. So if you paid a keen eye to my other videos, recent videos leading up to this one, there used to be a Triad PAMP1 two-channel stereo amplifier driving the living room. 
So because I had the two channels of the Parasounds, I went ahead and, and deinstalled, essentially going to be able to return the PMP1. And so the living room speakers are, drive, are being driven off of one channel each, uh, left main upstairs off of the top A52, the free amplifier in the top A52, and the right speaker upstairs driven off of the free amplifier in the bottom A52. So I am actually taking advantage of all 13 amp channels, saving money because I don't need to buy the extra, the extra amp, buffering against the cost of the Parasounds because those were definitely not cheap. Going from one Emotiva to three Parasound Halos was definitely a big part of the, of the step up in cost for these changes. And of course, still running the Marantz, although today, today I did pick up the Anthem AVM70 and its side rail uh, rack ears. So that's upstairs. I'll be getting ready to do an unboxing on that. I'm gonna cover that thing to the nines. I'm gonna cover that AVM70 very, very deeply. UI overview, setup, menus, arc calibration, everything. So I'm really excited about that. I did decide to go ahead and pull the trigger, bought it from a local home theater shop at a really uh, pretty good price. I was fighting hard there for a little bit between the Anthem or the Arkham the AB40, but decided to go ahead and go with the Anthem. I think Anthem as a brand looks really good, maybe a little more stable, arc is solid. So I think that unit is gonna do some work here. And it leads into the longer term plans where I think ultimately I would like to have an Anthem STR preamp driving the living room as I step up the quality of the two channel space that we have going on up there. So that's the first home theater 2.0 vlog. I'm gonna go get sweaty some more here, start taking care of some more stuff, disconnecting, deinstalling, maybe do some painting today, today or tomorrow. I'm not sure if I wanna paint before we install all the in-walls. The one thing I'm really afraid of actually is making too much of a mess in a finished room with carpet and so on. So I'm gonna get some cloth drops, basically try and turn it into a, a sanitation or a, a clean room. So anything that we that we dust and debris and so on, that we make cutting into the walls and getting all the in walls and stuff in we can try to keep that to a minimum we're going to have to cut in up there as well unfortunately so we're going to be making a mess in here too and cover up this rack i'm kind of a neat freak so i want to try to keep everything as clean as i can as we go through the steps so home theater 2.0 setup vlog number one and look for more very soon please like and subscribe and take a look below for ways to support the channel so much stuff going on with this upgrade in this installation and i had some really interesting conversations today about subwoofers more on that to come so as always thanks for watching and coming back for more